Good morning. We're, uh, we're down in the seed warehouse today. We've got a box of beans to treat this morning. That customer who I walked fields with the other day needs a box for replants on, uh, on our beans. If you buy treated beans, the replant is 100% covered, including the treatment. So we're going to treat these for him, for replant. We ended up with just under a half inch of rain yesterday, 0.45 according to our rain gauge. Um, so enough that we're not gonna do anything today, but not horrible, it's not terribly wet out there. And hopefully tomorrow we'll be back in the fields, probably definitely with at least with the sprayer, if not um, doing anhydrous. So, and then there is almost no rain in the 10 day forecast, which is, is good because we're gonna get our anhydrous done, we're gonna get our spraying done and everything that we need to do field work wise. But then it might turn dry, and that means we got to get our irrigation stuff working. So I am hopeful um, that by early next week, that will be ready to go. I don't know. I talked to the well guys yesterday. They had come up and done that test um, a couple days ago to see how big a pump and everything that we need. They have got that figured out. We need a 25 horsepower um, submersible well pump, so they're going to get that put in. They said... They should have it tomorrow. I don't know that that means they're going to come and put it in tomorrow, but they should have it tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. So if they get it tomorrow and they don't come, we're probably looking at at least Monday. It's fine. But then I got to bury pipe. And that should go fairly quick, but it's got to get done. So anyway, that's where we're at with the, uh, the irrigation project. Time to do a little crop scouting this morning. So we're going to go over here and look at our uh, genetics by environment plot, my high management standard practice stuff. Also have my emergence trial flagging stuff right up here. Um, we'll just take a peek at that. I doubt you'll see much difference other than the late mergers are behind the first day stuff. All right, so in our emergence trial over there, we noticed that there's maybe a growth stage or, or almost two difference between the day one emergers and the day four stuff. But now we're standing in a split row between varieties. This is um, uh, a new 105 day and a new 103 day here. And just kind of looking at the differences between them. The 103 day, like this plant here, is actually a V6 plant. We've got our sixth leaf collar, just barely out right here. Um, that side over there looks more like V5 corn. It's not quite showing that next leaf collar. So the 03 is a little bit farther ahead. There's a touch of a shade color difference to them you can see, especially as you look across the rows, but um, both look pretty good. And we're in good shape here. Now we are gonna walk down past the uh, flag I've got over there because that's the high management side. That's the side that we put the infertile fertilizer on. We did not over here. That's the side we put um, the two passes of foliar on already. So we'll see if we can notice any differences there. All right, so very interesting finding. So that flag is the split. And um, there's three things that we have done different on this side versus that side. And it is not a variety change here. This is the same variety on both sides of the split. But it is, I mean, you can see how much bigger these plants are, at least we can. Um, we have a thicker, girthier stalk, and uh, it's it's close to a growth stage ahead, even in the same hybrid. Um, so the differences were the infurrow fertilizer. I put the two by two starter on over here and over here, but on the standard side, we did not use the infurrow. So my my season pass stuff that I got from the Andersons uh, did not get put on over here. It did over here, and I think that's probably what we're seeing the biggest difference in just getting this corn off and growing. And, and moving a little bit faster. Um, but then we have made two now foliar passes. Uh, the first one was like a week ago or a little more than a week ago with um, some of those Anderson's products. And then we were in here two days ago, I think, maybe three days ago, whatever day it was that I was spraying. Uh, and we put the second shot of foliars on, we put our foliar fungicides on and I put that source on here. So interesting, we're already seeing results. If we look at uh, we look at the, some plants here, like this one, there's our, our bottom leaf. So we're one, two, three, four, five, six. I could even make an argument that there's a leaf collar right there as on uh, a seventh leaf. So that would be almost a V7 plant where we were V6 just barely over there where we looked. So I'm here with agronomist Wade. Wade's my, my seed company agronomist. 
and uh, so he was helping me kind of look at this stuff and he just noticed something else that would show that this side of the field where we've put the high management stuff is a little bit happier than this side what'd you find Wade so we're starting to see some tillers on the treated side here um, tillers are just a expression of that plant being really happy and healthy it says basically we have more resources than we need at this current time uh, there's different ways to look at tillers some guys don't like them because it's removing you know resources from the individual plant itself that we're trying to grow Main stock yeah you know other people look at it as hey this is a good thing because it's again showing that that plant has more resources than it currently needs you know so you can kind of argue on which side of the fence you fall on there for the most part though if the main stem is is needs something it's going to pull it from those tillers right that is the it's going to rob yeah. it from them yeah yep. so let me show you what we're talking about so it's not on every plant but for example right there and there's actually two on that plant mm -hmm. one on each side and then that one's got one there was one there um i thought we saw some over here so yeah there's some there's some over there starting so on this side here where we've put our foliars we put our in furrow that plant is saying hey we've got plenty of nutrients we've got everything we need we can produce another ear kind of is what it's saying but when you look over here on the side where we did not do that stuff you'll probably find a couple i see one over there but they're not as frequent there is none on any of those plants in that row there like it's they're just a lot more infrequent and so that's a sign that what we're doing is working all right time to move on to some beans here these are our march planted soybeans wade wanted to take a look at them so uh we're hoping to find a flower out here i don't i don't see any yet but we're gonna look real close they're growing they're getting better um yeah they're gonna take off here pretty soon well, here's one of the plants that we found. So we've got our unifoliate. The cotyledons fell off. I don't know if they did that when I picked it or what, but we've got one trifoliate, two trifoliates, three, four, five fully expanded, number six working on there. But we also look at these bottom ones, have these branches coming out with another set of trifoliates on the bottom one, two, three. No flowers yet, but they're going to be close. Um, I tried to pull the roots out. It broke off, but look at all of the nodules on that main stem, the main root. And that's not, I mean, I didn't even really dig hardly any roots out, but yeah, break them apart. They're a nice red color inside there, actively providing nitrogen. These look good. They look really good. Yep, right there. I'm happy with them. I think for March, they did okay, right? I think you're off to a good start. We're off to a good start. We need to go look at some of our first planted, uh, May, May planted beans the next time we planted. I've got some uh, three fours that should be looking pretty good too. <sighs> they're starting to fill the rows in a little bit more. We'll get more and more over the next week or two here until they're canopied and uh, beans sometimes grow really slow early in the year and it's sort of um, you just look at them and think man they're not doing anything but unless you get out there and really look at them and realize that yeah we've got trifoliates coming we've got branches coming like they're they are Here's doing something v4 v5 first couple of days of june so yeah we're, we're yeah v4 to v5 in the first couple of days of june i thought beans weren't supposed to start flowering until uh june 21st sorry dropped you it's the longest day of the year, so you want to use all that sunshine. I understand. That's why we planted them early. But I was always told that beans are triggered to start flowering when the days start getting shorter. That's not really true, is it? There's a lot that goes into it. Okay. Um, you know, length of daylight. It's actually length of darkness. Length of darkness. what causes. If you want to Google phytochrome. <laughs> I see. But I have seen flowers before June 21st before, and we will have them out here in this field, I'm pretty confident. All right, we've moved on to another field. This field is the first field of beans planted in May. So basically the next field after our March planted beans. And um, I found this plant, which strikes me because of how much branching that we've got. From these cotyledons down here, we've got from this node, is that a node where the cotyledons are? <laughs> we've got two branches with multiple trifoliates out already really i mean those are coming out below the unifoliate leaves we've only got three true trifoliates or on the main stem so this would be a v3 soybean um 
And Wade says that that can happen a lot with the branching when they get nipped off. You know, if a deer or something comes along and bites the top of the plants off, then it'll branch from up down lower. But I'm seeing it on lots of them, and they don't look like they've been chewed off. Even, even this plant here has got branching leaves coming off of that bottom uh, where the cotyledons come out. They're coming out from the unifoliates. They're coming out from the first trifoliate. Both of these have them, yeah. These are going to be flowering soon, too. Look at the nodules started there. So I, the first thing I noticed when we pulled up here was the beans look a little yellow. They're just they're not, They don't have a dark green color to them yet. But it takes a little bit of time for the roots to grow enough to develop those root nodules to start producing nitrogen, right? So these little these little cysts here, not, cysts. not what are they called? Not a cyst, not yeah, that's not the right thing. Nodules, they look like a little ball. But those are what um, the bacteria, the Brady rhizobia, and I assume there's a few other Brady strains, rhizobia. but the Brady rhizobia, they basically live in there. They feed off of the roots of the soybeans and they in turn take atmospheric nitrogen and give it to the plant in a plant available form. That's why we inoculate our beans, but more of those Brady rhizobia out there to form these nodules. And uh, so they're just getting started here and should start feeding some nitrogen into the beans and make them turn a little greener, right? Basically what makes a legume a legume. That's exactly right. Up here where we're gonna irrigate, there's our rain. This corn is growing, it looks beautiful. Um, it's a lot bigger plant for the growth stage compared to some of that other stuff, it's a lot bigger plant. Like here's here's bottom leaf, so one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six leaf collars, this is V6 corn. I mean, some of that stuff we looked at first field this morning was V6, but it's not this tall, it's not this big. This stuff is just, it's the sandier soil up here is what it is. It just grows a little bit faster. Knee high by the 4th of July, right? Yeah, knee high by the 4th of July. I mean, your knees are lower to the ground My than most people, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we've made knee high by the uh, 6th of June. Probably by the 4th of June. Uh, yeah, I may have made it by the 4th of June. It'll be shoulder high, or it'll, it'll be above my head by the 4th of July, by far. So this corn is in that rapid growth stage now, or just kind of entering that rapid growth stage. It basically will double in size every week until it's tasseling. So where it is today, a week later, a week from now, we'll be up here. Two weeks from now, it'll be shoulder high. Yeah, somebody asked me if I was going to paint an orange plant. I don't know if I'm going to do that again or not, but... Um, it is it is growing very very fast that's why we put our foliars on that's why we needed to make sure we get our nitrogen on all that stuff that we need to have before the corn really starts taking off and sucking up a lot of nutrients a lot of moisture we've got plenty of moisture here right now a week from now that may not be the case but that's what that thing over there is for so hopefully a week from now it is operational I'm really really hoping that we can do that well we uh, looked at a few other fields grab some lunch taking a walk through the uh, corn plot here just comparing some hybrids and stuff and trying to see what little differences there are there's some some differences in size and color and growth stages that kind of stuff but nothing too significant at this point okay I have no idea where we left off I think it's been a while ago uh, maybe looking at the plot maybe I filmed something since then I'm not really sure but anyway um, I had to unload some empty boxes from somebody, or got a trailer load of empty boxes back. And uh, I should go and pick up some more stuff from some of my customers. But I don't feel like it today. The boys both have baseball games later tonight, so we're trying not to get too busy between now and then. And uh, we're going to go down and work on a boat trailer. You guys remember? Oh, well, well, I'll show you. So if you guys remember back to my um, boat trailer tire saga last fall when I was taking it down to Berkey and we had two tires uh, explode on us on the trip down there. It also managed to rip my fenders off the boat trailer. And um, well, they're sort of in rough shape. Uh, this one here, it ripped the mounting holes out on both sides, one of them over here. And it's actually rubbed through right here. So I probably could have salvaged this fender Maybe got some big flat washers and put on there and made it held in place. Um, but I just, I just, I bought some new ones. So I gotta get my new boat fender installed. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna work on that here. This one's kind of the same way. 
That got hot at some point. Melted the plastic right through. Anyway, we got one on a go-kart, and we got another one that wants to fly a kite, so we're gonna help them for a minute. Shark kites today. Nice job, Brayson. It is quite windy, too windy to spray, so good day for flying kites. You guys know what's more important than boat trailer fenders? This. This right here. Oh, he's having a good old time. We got another one. Well, the boys had to go get ready for baseball. That is so much more stable than what the old ones were. Like, not flopping around or anything. That's uh, that's nice. That's really good. So, we gotta get the lights in yet. I don't have, I don't have the right pigtail on my wire harness there because I had wired these in. So I'm debating whether I take my old lights off and put them in and put new crimp connectors or some sort of splice connectors on the wire harness, or do I go and get the little pigtails to attach these and. Use the lights that came with the fenders. I don't know. It probably doesn't matter. They're 89 cents for the connectors, so I might just go and get them. It'll it'll prevent this. See, my boat got all dirty on the way back because I didn't have a fender. All right, I gotta get ready for baseball games. I might have to. Uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna be busy this weekend, so I might have to go to the lake this weekend. But we're we're probably gonna be busy side dressing corn, so that's unlikely to happen, I guess.